based on hyperspectral image technology. I'm from the Delhi University of Technology, China. The contents of today's presentation include three sections. The first section is the introduction of near infrared uh, spectroscopy technology. And the second section is about the hyperspectroscopy imaging technology. And the third section is about the application of the hyperspectral image technology. Now, first, uh, let's see what's the near infrared spectroscopy technology. As we all know that the whole electromagnetic wave range from the 0 0.0001 nanometer to 100,000 uh, microns. And the whole electromagnetic can be divided into different regions based on the energy and the region. Uh, the common use optical radiation cover the range from 100 nanometer to 1,000 microns, including the UV region, VIS region, near infrared region, and infrared region, and so on. Today, I will introduce you the near infrared region. Near infrared region ranges from the 750 nanometer to the 2.5 microns. The near infrared region records the overtones and combinations of the fundamental vibration of CH, NH, and OH bond. So it means uh, the NIR spectrum can record the most chemical information from the samples. And the infrared region records the fundamental vibration of specific functional groups. Compared with the infrared region, the near infrared region uh, needs the cheap optical materials and can routinely used in industry. So in this case, we use the near infrared spectroscopy to uh, monitor or assess the agricultural food quality. Near infrared spectroscopy technology is a quick, simple, simple, simple preparation and easy to realize the online detection. Now we can give the, an example uh, for using the NIR spectroscopy to detect the beef quality. For example, if you want to know the quality of this beef, you can directly measure the NIR spectrum from the beef surface. And then we can get the spectral data like this, right? And as we mentioned before, the NIR spectra records the overtones and combination uh, of combination of formation uh, vibration of CH town and OH town. So the NIR spectra is very broad. So we need the mathematical method to process this uh, spectral data and to get the chemical information we need. The commonly used mathematical method uh, include, include these three steps. First, uh, we get the original spectra from the sample, like this. We get the original spectra from the beef sample. Then we can pre-process this sample because the original sample sometimes has, uh, uh, has much the noise to interfere, interference or the or target uh, information. So we need to pre-process the original spectrum. Um, this is a common use of the processing method. After pre-process the spectrum, uh, we can develop the prediction model between the spectrum and the uh, sample quality. We can use the multivariate linear or nonlinear nonlinear regression models to uh, get the relationship between the spectra and the agricultural food quality. Finally, we need to evaluate the model performance. This is a common used parameters to evaluate the developed model's performance. Uh, common used parameters include the standard 
stand, <coughs> stand error and the determination coefficient, these two parameters were used to evaluate the developed model. If your model have a lower standard error and a higher determination coefficient, which means your model has a good performance. NIR spectroscopy has been applied in many fields, uh, such as we can use, uh, use it to uh, evaluate the quality of fruit and vegetables, and also the other agricultural products. Besides, we can use the technology to evaluate the meat, fish, beef, or pork quality. Uh, for example, to predict the content of protein, the content of, of uh, fatty or the freshness, and so on. Uh, also, we can use to predict the uh, quality of juice. And our spectroscopy technology is re rapid non-destructive detection, which provides a pro promising tools for monitoring food quality online. It means you no need the sample preparation. After you detect the sample, uh, the sample still can be eaten or sold, so it is non-destructive. Now we have a problem uh, as we just introduced, the NIR technology just records just records the spectral information. It means we can only get a two-dimensional spectral curve. We cannot get the spatial information. For example, if we want to detect the uh, water content of this cucumber using the NIR technology, we can only get the spectral information from one small error, right? We can only get the spectral information from this small error. We cannot get the water content distribution spatially. So how to determine the spatial uh, quality? For example, if we want to know the sugar distribution of the Swiss cherry, how to get the spatial, the image uh, information. This is the reason we, why we introduced the hyperspectral image technology. Uh, let's see what's the hyperspectral image technology. Uh, hyperspectral image technology contains both of spectral and spatial information. Uh, as we just uh, introduced, the NIR spectroscopy technology, it records only a two-dimensional uh, spectral data, right? We can get the spectral data from this small region. We cannot get the spatial image information from the sample. So hyperspectral technology contains not only the spectral, spectral information, but also the spatial image information of the sample. So which which it means every pixels, every spatial uh, location, every pixels in the hyperspectral image is associated with a range of wavelengths. So every pixel actually contains a series of spectral data. Now we can check this example. This is the example for the beef, uh, beef quality evaluation, a fish, fish quality evaluation using hyperspectral image technology. We can see this is the RGB image. Compared with the RGB image, the hyperspectral image contains many image, uh, which it means if you only have the NIR spectrum at each wavelength, you can only get one value, one intensity, one value, right? But for the hyperspectral image, at each wavelength, you have not only uh, a value, but an image, also an image. So the hyperspectral image uh, contains many image at each wavelength. So it's a hyperspectral cube. It is a three-dimensional, the 
uh, data. Hyperspectral image technology also has been widely used in many fields. For example, we can monitor the nutrition distribution of plants and also the uh, quality distribution of meat, also the water content and the chlorophy distribution of leaves. This is application of hyperspectral technology. Now, I will introduce the hyperspectral imaging technology in details based on the experiment our group conducted. Our first uh, experiment is to assess the fresh and frozen fish quality based on the hyperspectral image technology. Uh, as we are known that compared with the fresh fish, frozen fish present a lower sensory quality due to the change of the flavor, texture, and color during freezing. So freezing and thawing fish uh, will make the sensory and the market value low. The objective of our research is to classify the fresh, frozen, and frozen sound fish based on hyperspectral uh, image technology and to predict the, the storage time for this fish. This is our experiment process. We bought the fish samples from the local market and divided them into two parts. One of the one part were kept in four degrees in the fridge, and some the others were kept in minus 20 degrees in the fridge. Before the experiment, we took take out the fish samples and put them at room temperature for one hour. And for the frozen fish, we put them uh, at room temperature thrown for one hour and then left to room temperature for another one hour to get the recruit, um, recruit them. After that, uh, we, we will measure the hyperspectral image of this fish sample. For the hyperspectral image system, we have different approaches to uh, get the image. There are the point scan and lens scan, error scan, single shot, and the reflectance detectors, transmittance detectors, and, the, and so on. In our experiment, we use the lens scan, lens scan and the reflectance detector system to get the hyperspectral image of fish sample. This is the system we used in our experiment. A fish samples were put on this transmission unit. When the system is on, fish sample will move from left, from right to left. Then the camera can scan land image one by one, scan the land image one by one, and finally synthesize uh, one fish uh, image. This is a hyperspectral image of fish samples we get from our experiment. So we can see that at each wavelength, we have an image, not only a, a number, it's a special uh, image. So hyperspectral image not only contains the spatial information, but also the spectral information. In this case, if you want, to, you can select any uh, error you want to calculate the mean spectra and to measure the mean uh, standard uh, value. This is the spectrum we get from the uh, fish samples with different storage time. From this spectra, uh, information from this spectra, we can we can get the we can see that the spectral intensity decreases 
when the storage time increased. The lower reflectance value may be caused by the softer tissue generated after storage. Uh, as we know that when the storage time is long, the fish tissue will become uh, softer. So more light would be diffused or transmitted into the deeper tissue, resulting in the less uh, light reflectance. Now we want to predict the fish storage time uh, depending on this spectral information. Per processing methods such as normalized multiple scattering uh, correction derivative were used to improve the original spectra for eliminating noise and extract the informative spectral variables before model development. Then we use partial least square uh, linear regression models to uh, develop the relation to develop the prediction model between the spectra and the uh, fish samples. This is the result we get from the prediction model. Now we can see that we use the determined coefficient and the root mean square error, these parameters to uh, evaluate our prediction model. From the table result, we can see that uh, for the fresh phase uh, prediction, we can see the Determination coefficient of cross validation and uh, calibration is around 0 0.8. It is uh, acceptable, I think. And for the fr frozen thorn fish, the determination is also uh, acceptable. So the result means that the hyperspectral image can be used to predict the storage time for the fresh fish and the frozen salt fish. Now we want to classify the fresh and frozen salt fish based on the hyperspectral image. Uh, partial least square regression, partial least square discriminate analysis of algorithm were used to classify the fresh and frozen uh, swan fish normalized were used to pre-process our original spectra. Uh, this is the results of PLS uh, DA models. From this uh, table results, we can see that 22 fresh fish can be correctly identified as the fresh fish, but two fresh fish was uh, misclassified as a frozen swan fish. And for the frozen swan fish, uh, there's also one fresh, one fish were misclassified as a fresh fish. Uh, anyway, although not 100% accuracy were obtained, but it also can, uh, it also, uh, we also can uh, conclude that the hyperspectral image technology is promising to uh, classify the fresh and the frozen uh, swan fish. So <clears throat> next, we want to investigate the effect of spectra obtained from the different surface of the fish samples on the model's development. Uh, we measure the spectra, hyperspectra from the different surface. Uh, first, we measure the hyperspectra from the intact fish with scales. And second, we measure the hyperspectral image from the fish, scaled fish, removed scales. And third, we measure the hyperspectral image from the flesh set of fish valid and the skin set of the fish valid. So we measure the hyperspectral image from the different surface, and we want to check if this will affect on our developed model. The red finger presents the uh, spectra we obtained from the different surface. Uh, we select this red region of interest and calculate the mean spectra. This is the mean spectra we uh, calculate from this different surface. From this finger, we can see that 
the intact fish with scales and without scales have a lower intensity than this uh, spectra from the fish pellet. So uh, from this uh, result, we think the spectra from different surfaces may have an effect on the model development. Then we developed the model based on the spec the uh, hyperspectral image from the different surface. This is the result. This paper shows the uh, prediction storage storage time prediction with the spectra from uh, intact fish with scales and the intact fish without removing the scales. And this is a determination coefficient and the root mean square error. We can see, first we can see the intact fish with scales. So for the fresh uh, story time prediction of fresh fish, the determination coefficient is, uh, is lower than the previous uh, research. And for the intact scaled fish, remove the scale effect, we can see the determination coefficient uh, improved a lot. So it means for the intact fish assessment, remove, removing their scales, scales uh, maybe have a better uh, performance of, for the prediction model. And now we want to uh, investigate for the uh, fish pellet. We measure the spectra from the flesh set and the skin set. We want to see the effect. And this is the result. We can see that for the fish pellet, for the fish pellet, if we measure the spectra from the flesh set, uh, for the fresh fish and frozen solid fish pellet, the model have improved their prediction ability. So the best partial least square regression model for storage time prediction for the fresh and frozen swan fish fetish uh, was the best with a determination coefficient of 0 0.84 uh, opportunity. Now we want to uh, investigate the spectra from the different surface on the, uh, on the classification model. This is the uh, uh, classification results. We can see that if we measure the hyperspectral image from the intact fish with scales, there are two fresh fish were misclassified as the frozen solid fish, and the one uh, frozen solid fish were misclassified as fresh fish. But for the uh, image we obtained from the intact scaled fish, the classification results is very good. Uh, accuracy and sen sensitivity can, uh, can reach 100%. No fish were misclassified. Now we investigate the uh, fish pellet. Also, we measure the spectral image from the flesh side and the skin side. And also, there is some frozen stone fish were misclassified and the result is not as good as the uh, uh, spectral image we obtained from the intact fish without scale. Uh, the result, result demo, uh, demonstrates that fish, uh, fish scales has a strong uh, interface for the uh, model development. The conclusion of this uh, work, the storage time and adulteration of fresh and frozen sawn fish were started by hyperspectral image in this work. We on the spectra obtained from the different surface of fish sample. For the intact fish, PLS model developed with spectra from the intact scaled fish performed a better result with a higher determination coefficient for the fr fresh and frozen fish prediction which means the skill have a big effect for them on the model uh, development. 
and for the classification model developed with spectra from intact scaled fish also present a better result with a accuracy of 100 percent and for the fish valid uh, a higher determination coefficient were obtained from the PLS model developed with spectra from fish flash flash size and the model developed with spectra obtained from flesh and skin said both uh, demonstrate a classification result with the accuracy of 97.5%. So this result demonstrates that the spectral options from fish flesh were the best way to develop storage time prediction model. And the spectral options from intact scaled fish were the best way to build a classification model for fresh and frozen salt fish. However, um, the effect uh, of the spectral options from the different surface uh, still need more work to um, confirm that. Now we already developed the um, suitable model uh, prediction model for the fish classification and predicting the storage tab. Now we already obtained the, the model. Uh, for the hyperspectral image, uh, as we just introduced, uh, for each pixel, actually it contains a series of spectral information. That means for each pixel, actually it is a two dimensional uh, spectral curve. So with the developed model, we input the developed model in each pixel, we can calculate the uh, quality of each pixel. So we can visually, uh, visually present the quality distribution. The optical models were employed on each pixel or hyperspectral image and the prediction values were calculated and present in the corresponding color. The color image usually showed the story time change of fish valid. Because in this work, we predict the story time. So for each sample, the color is almost same. If you predict the uh, distribution of protein, uh, water, or uh, sugar, maybe the color is diff uh, varied from position to another position. This is the whole process for uh, fish quality assessment using NIR, uh, using hyperspectral image technology. As well, uh, as I introduced uh, in our previous research, uh, when we uh, assess the fish quality based on the hyperspectral image technology, usually we select one whole uh, region of interest and calculate the mean spectra of this error and measure the uh, freshness indi indicators of this whole error, developed the prediction model between the spectra and the freshness indica indicators. However, if the quality distribution is not even, is not homo ho homogeneous, so the mean spectra will not su <coughs> sufficiently corrected with the quality. So without consideration of the non-homogeneous property, the mean spectra of the ROI could not be sufficiently corrected with the average quality reference. So the poor performance models will be achieved. It means if the, uh, for example, if the protein content is varied from this position to this position, if you calculate the mean spectra, the mean spectra will not sufficiently correct it, uh, correlated with the 
chemical content. So to solve this issue, we propose a new master classing based partial least square regression to improve the performance of the prediction model. In this case, we firstly developed this one sample into several homogeneous sub 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 pieces using the clustering analysis. Like this, we developed the whole non homogeneous sample to several homogeneous sub pieces using the clustering analysis method. It means in this case, we developed the pixels into several groups based on their spectral uh, properties. This is the experiment flowchart for our second experiment. This experiment also contains two steps. For the step one, for the step, step one, we bought the fish sample from the local market and then measure, directly measure the hyperspectral image from the fish valid surface. And then we select the whole uh, region of interest and calculate the mean spectrum. And uh, at the same time, we measure the chemical freshness uh, in the size uh, of the fish uh, samples. Then uh, partial least square regression models were used to develop the prediction model between the spectrum and the real value. Uh, two models were developed in this work. Uh, first uh, model were developed based on the full wavelength range, and then we <clears throat> improved the model by, by selecting several characteristic wavelengths. So two models were developed. One model is full uh, PS model, and the second model is SPA. SPS selected wavelengths PIS model. This is our first experiment. Uh, this is the, the results of four PIS model for predicting the fishness uh, indices. From the results, we can see that for the four uh, wavelengths model, the determination coefficient is 0. Uh, seven, it's not so high. We can compare with the selected wavelength model. Successive prediction algorithm were performed to select a specific number of wavelengths. And then multivariate regression methods were used to develop the prediction model based on the selected wavelengths. In this case, we select around 30 uh, characteristic wavelengths. Then we developed our prediction model based on only these 30 wavelengths. This is the uh, uh, model results of SPS PIS models. Uh, from this results, we can see that the selected wavelength models, although uh, fewer wavelengths were included in the model, but the determination coefficient is a little, a little improved, improved than the than the full uh, PIS model. This is our first uh, experiment, and then we continue continue with the second uh, step. The second step we uh, bought the fish sample from the supermarket as the first experiment. And then before we developed the model, we clustered the uh, sample into uh, different clusters based on the spectral information. As, we, as I just mentioned, if the fish quality is not, is non homogeneous, so the mean Spectra we are not uh, we are uh, cannot specifically correlated with the uh, real quality. So before we developed the model, we cluster the 
uh, sample into different clusters based on the spectral information. If the quality is different, the spectral uh, should be different too. So based on this theory, uh, we cluster this whole uh, sample. And then to select the ROI region based on the cluster, like this, if we cluster, if we divide the whole sample into three cluster, then we can uh, select three ROS and calculate the mean spectra of this small subregion, and then uh, divide the model between the uh, sub mean spectra and their uh, real quality. So k-means cluster analysis will apply to cluster the pixels of hyperspectral image into several clusters based on the spectral values. K-means cluster analysis is initialized by randomly passing the data into k clusters and comp comp computing the cluster center for each classification. Now, how to determine the uh, number of the cluster? So uh, how many clusters we should divide it? This is uh, the first problem we should to solve. The number of the clusters is one of the, it determines how many clusters should be divided. So if the uh, cluster, if the cluster the number of the cluster is too small, uh, it will generate uh, and in operate the classification. If the uh, number is too large, it will increase the time of data processing. So to find the desirable k value uh, is very important. In our work, the k value was set from two to 16 at the interval of uh, to to find which uh, which number is the best for the uh, k value. This is the result. We uh, define the number of the clusters from two to sixteen at the interval of two. Now we can see the results to determine which is the best uh, number of clusters. From this results, we can see that. When the cluster increase, the uh, when the number of the cluster when the k increase, uh, the number of the cluster increase. But when the k decreased age, uh, we continue. We can we go on to increase the number. The cluster no change. So uh, we define k uh, equal age as uh, uh, number of cluster in our work. Uh, this is the result of the uh, cluster-based PIS model for predicting the freshness uh, indices. From the result, we can see that the determination after we divided the whole samples into several homogeneous uh, homogeneous uh, sub pieces, the performance of the prediction model improved uh, than the than our first experiment. Uh, this model is is developed based on the four wavelength range. So we we want to select the character, characteristic wavelengths based on the SPAS of algorithm. This is the results of the selected uh, characteristic wavelengths. From this results, we can see that uh, less uh, wavelengths were selected in this tab. And we can check the model's performance. This is the model's performance. Uh, we can see the performance uh, improved, the determination coefficient is higher 
than the previous, uh, the first experiment. And also, uh, these two table presents the cluster-based PIS model developed with the four wavelengths and developed with the selected wavelengths. From this results, we can see that the selected wavelengths also only age uh, 16 wavelengths were contained, were contained in the developed model. The model perform, performed a better result than the four wavelengths range. Uh, this is the comparison of classroom based PS model and the uh, conventional PS models. Uh, these results we obtained from our classroom based model, and these results uh, obtained from the, our first experiment, the conventional PS models. From this result, we can see that. Before developed the PIS model, we cluster the uh, sample firstly. The model performance is has a significantly improved than the conventional uh, method. You can see the determination coefficient for the collaboration and cross validation. Both of them is higher than the conventional experiment. And also we compared the wavelengths selected from the uh, conventional PIS algorithm and the cluster-based PIS algorithm. From this results, we can see that the, uh, sorry, this is the clustering-based uh, PIS result. From the result, we can see that clustering-based the PIS model uh, select fewer uh, wavelengths than the conventional uh, PLS algorithm. And this is the model results. Uh, table, the blue table presents the classroom based uh, PLS model developed with the selected wavelengths. And the red table presents the uh, conventional PLS model developed with the selected wavelengths we can see that the conventional method select more wavelengths than the uh, classroom based PIS model. Although less wavelengths were contained in the classroom based PIS model, uh, a higher, a good performance or opportunity. So the results demonstrate that the classroom based uh, PS model performed better than the conventional method. Now is the uh, conclusion of our this work. The pixels presenting similar spectral properties would be grouped into uh, one cluster, uh, denoted the same chemical property spatially. And classroom based PLS models were established between the spectral and the quality reference obtained from the classroom based uh, RIS. And the classroom based PLS approach aimed to find a more specific relationship between the spectral and the quality index from the non homogeneous samples by dividing the whole sample into several relative uh, homogeneous. Uh, sub pieces. So this method uh, can improve the uh, performance of the prediction model than the conventional uh, PIS model. Uh, now uh, that's all. Thank you for all. Thank you for all your listening. Uh, this this is my today's presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Doctor Jia uh, 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 Very uh, nice uh, presentation. So many work. <laughs> I, I uh, haven't, I haven't given English uh, ah, yeah, lecture no, for no, a long okay. time, so mm -hmm. maybe uh, not very clear. Mm. Please ask me questions. Yes. <laughs> we enjoy. Okay, so now we have. Uh,
question and answer session. So we invite uh, all of the participants to uh, raise your hand, or maybe you can uh, write your question in the chat box, and we will uh, ask to Dr. Sanjeejia. Okay. Uh, Okay, we have uh, maybe one question uh, from uh, Dr. Amanda Mai, our Vice Dean. Okay, thank you, Pa Aman, for your question. So I will uh, read the question. Uh, Dr. Sanjeejia, as known that Indonesia has a wide archipelago and scattered fishery production center, therefore, uh, efforts to maintain the quality of fishery products become difficult. Okay, so the question is, how the pragmatic aspect um, apply at the fishermen's uh, or village level of hyperspectral imaging technology? So, how about the application maybe of the hyperspectral oh. imaging technology for our farmers, for our uh, a oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. maybe in the <laughs> yeah in the very uh, uh yes very simple way how how we can apply uh, oh, how to and apply how it will be realized in the near future uh your technology maybe if if possible soon your technology will be uh applied to our uh oh. <laughs> yes, yes i understand okay. actually yeah. compared with the near infrared uh, spectroscopy technology, hyperspectral image technology contains a lot of data. Uh, it means uh, it mean, big data. Uh, yeah, big data. data processing time is uh, maybe is long, uh, how, time how, consuming. How, how long? How long? How long? Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, how how long? Minute, minute. Mm. One hour, maybe, or, or how many? Oh, no, 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 not that long. Uh, maybe several minutes. Mm. But to, for online, mm. I think it's uh, it's still long. Still for long, online yeah. application, yeah. it's online still long. Mm. Yes. Uh, compared with the NIR spectroscopy technology, uh, hyperspectral image technology can obtain the spatial, uh, mm -hmm. spatial information. Uh, like I just introduced, we can. Uh, monitor the nutrition distribution of plants, agricultural plants. We can monitor the uh, nutrition, uh, enter, how to enter the plant and how to distribute like this. Uh, how, to, how to apply the, for the fisherman, uh, fisherman. Yeah, I mean, your, your technology may be, uh, can be applied directly to the fisherman or maybe for industry, or maybe for a fisherman? Yeah, for fisherman or industry, uh, I think we can, uh, for fisherman. Um, maybe, for fisherman, we, maybe we, we need time. <laughs> <laughs> for fisherman, maybe uh, can be used to assess the protein fat mm. uh, the distribution for fish for my fish uh, okay okay but uh, your technology is expensive yes expensive it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, it's still expensive much mean. expensive than the NIR technology NIR. Oh, okay so, I uh, maybe now most of experiment work that in the lab they are in yeah. the lab not not so how about in China? Uh, your technology already apply in China in uh, industry or maybe in uh, hyperspectral? No, no, no. No, not Hyper yet. Oh, okay. not, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Maybe. Okay. Maybe Only after hmm, after yeah. China apply, maybe Indonesia will follow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it's only the research research level. Okay. Research okay. Level. okay. Yes. Okay, Pak Aman. Uh, maybe the technology is still uh, far away. Maybe because uh, you know the price of the device and also maybe, uh, processing and many things we have to solve okay okay the, uh, thank you <laughs> thank you we wait we wait wait okay okay uh, okay any other question please 
you can thank you dr sanjaya for your response and we waiting for the next question anyone okay of course our student also may ask uh, in our department we have uh, a lecture on non extractive quality evaluation actually and mm -hmm. uh, i think some of our students also join so you can please ask to the expert so okay. uh, sanjaya okay. san is uh, the expert in the non extractive quality evaluation okay any or if not yet, I, I have a question actually, uh, Dr. Jiaja. Uh, uh, when you acquire the image, how about the uh, distance of the object and the uh, camera? The yes. Camera, oh, the distance you, around the, um, We need to adjust the distance uh, depending on our samples. For our mm -hmm. fish samples around, 20 centimeter, mm. maybe 20 centimeters. And uh, our system is a uh, land scan, land, land scan. Uh, oh, okay. So mm. you can uh, fish sample put on the uh, translation unit and the translation unit moved from uh, oh. right to left and the land scan, land by land. And I finally, uh, uh, since that's one image. Mm. Okay, uh. okay. Okay, thank you. We, we have another question from, okay, uh, please, Adelia, one of our students, please, you can ask directly to Dr. Jia Jia, Sanjia Jia, please. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Didi. Uh, I have a question. Let me introduce myself. My name is Adelia Dewi. I'm from Lampung University. Uh, I have a question. The near hyperspectral can detect uh, microba in the first and in the fish. Thank you. Oh, oh okay. uh, spectroscopy can detect yeah. microba, detect. microba inside the microba. Fish. Mm. Oh, microba. Is it possible to detect? Oh, I think it's possible. I think there are some research research researchers had already uh, done such kind of research. Oh. Oh. so possible. Oh, possible. Uh, it's possible. Yes, you can. You can search the papers on the website of the other uh, Google, other other. Uh, mm. So, uh, the microba is inside, uh, inside the fish. So, our uh, your system can uh, in, uh, inspect uh, the the uh, inside of the because uh, uh, we use use another uh, hyperspectra because if we use a visible image, maybe it's not easy because in the surface, right? But you use uh, another hyperspectra, so the not only the surface but also inside. So that's why uh, microba is also possible. Uh, yes. So, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, Adelia, you you can search. <laughs> Oh, you can. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm not very clear about the question. You can ask me later. Maybe I think mm, okay. you can. Mm -hmm. Micro. Uh. Microba. Mm. So uh, okay. Another question. Maybe we have in the chat box. Maybe not yet. Uh, okay. Please, uh, our student, or maybe our uh, faculty member, please ask. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if not yet, uh, I have another question uh, about the, the how did you decide the region of interest? Uh, really size. Mm. How how uh, did you decide? It depends. It depend on your. Uh, be, be, no, it depends on your sample. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the region of interest, you can select uh, a small region. If you only want to assess this small region, you can select this region. If you want mm -hmm. to enlarge, you can oh, I see. on your need mm -hmm. and sample. But is it is it true that uh, bigger ROA mean uh, more time to process, right? No? Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, it's bigger, bigger, bigger ROIS means the more data or content, mm. content. Uh, yes, more time. Okay. Uh, but for the library, library level, uh, minutes, minutes, 
one one or two minutes. Uh, but mm, for okay. online, maybe it's uh, okay. I see. Uh, we uh, we have for Anaya usually uh, less than uh, in in millisecond, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, but uh, in, uh, yeah. in hyperspectral, still in uh, second, yeah? not in millisecond. So maybe in the future we have to uh, increase the speedy, yeah? the speedy of the scan and the speedy of the uh, processing. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. we have another question, uh, uh, Dr. San. We have question from Ardia Baskara. You can see also in the chat box. Yesterday, my friend planned to make an application about detecting fresh fish uh, using this image technology. I think the material is very related. Uh, my question is, how big the opportunity for this image technology to be applied in Android or EOS? application how about your technology uh, apply by using android like anir maybe anir using android or you know android uh, i mean uh, using smartphone 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 oh. mm -hmm. uh, can you uh, apply your hyperspectral imaging by using smartphone uh hyperspectral imaging on using smartphone <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, now, uh, I, uh, I maybe it's still difficult. Level, maybe <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> I haven't heard. Uh, uh, maybe uh, using use uh, UV or visible image. We I I, I think uh, already apply by using yes, uh, yes. smartphone. But maybe yes. hyperspectral is uh, still uh, difficult yeah, because not only image, but also uh, not only spatial image, but also uh, spectral uh, data. So you have both data and also mm -hmm. the calculation as well. Not so, uh, and also the, the, the camera is also the problem. <laughs> so, yes, the camera, uh, yes. Also the price is very expensive. expensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why maybe uh, if we uh, put this uh, camera in the smartphone, the smartphone price, the, it will be very, uh, <laughs> Very uh, uh, expensive. Mm. So maybe uh, in the future, yes, uh, Baskara. In the future, hopefully, we will apply this uh, using smartphone. Mm. Yes. We okay. Need to lower, lower the price. Yeah, lower uh, price. Reduce the data dimension. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. So actually, uh, how much <laughs> the price? Much? In, uh, 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 for in, our uh, system, mm. about uh, I don't remember eight. Eight. Uh, in US dollar. <laughs> eight. Uh, eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. It's hundred thousand. Uh, yuan. Maybe, yuan. Yuan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe our, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So don't please, maybe name. our student may uh, calculate by using uh rupiah. How 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 much rupiah? Uh, eight hundred thousand yuan. <laughs> uh, it handles so yeah. mm. oh, for our system. Oh. Okay, this very still expensive. Yeah, mm. but I think uh, your system is very nice and very uh, promising to, of course, uh, increase the uh, ability of our uh, system to non-destructive uh, quality uh, to evaluate our uh, food. So uh, not only the spectral data, but also the spatial uh, spatial image. The spatial image is also important because we can yeah. see uh, every pixel. The condition is different actually, especially yeah, for, yeah. for fish, for agricultural product. That the variability is very high, so yeah. it's very nice. Okay, other question, please. I think not only uh, from Lampung, we have also uh, uh, many participants from uh, Jakarta, uh, from uh, Bogor, from uh, uh, so many from many places. Please ask <laughs> uh, to uh, Dr. Jaja. We have also from other university, from ITERA, please ask, uh, from uh, Lampung, uh, from UNILA. Or maybe Dr. Warji, you have uh, our uh, secretary, you have a question. 
or maybe uh, Dr. Mahira from UBM. <laughs> you have any question? Uh, we have also Dr. Mahira from UBM, uh, Malaysia. Or maybe we also have uh, Mrs. Yulia from uh, Polytechnic Negeri Lampung. You have a question, maybe? Uh, if not yet, so I also have another question. <laughs> Dr. Jaja, uh, you, in your uh, result, uh, in the first part, you mentioned uh, there is one false negative we you uh, have uh, two false positive uh, when you predict the uh, storage time. So can you explain, uh, is the false negative or false positive one is the, uh, which sample with the, what, what day, what day of the storage time? Oh, false, uh, false positive is false classification. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the tourist time. Eh? Uh, the, the sample is belong to the uh, first day or maybe uh, the what that what what days of uh, storage time, because I I guess that maybe the false positive or the false negative is belong to the uh, yes maybe two day or three days after after the uh, oh. so maybe close close to the. Fresh one, I mean, yes. maybe. <laughs> uh, for, for the details, I need to check. Yeah. Okay, check, okay. Uh, yeah. okay, so later, uh, maybe because uh, I, it is interesting because maybe uh, because of the similarity between the fresh yes. and maybe uh, two days, uh, three days after after storage is not so, uh, maybe not, not yet uh, different yes. yet with the fresh one. Mm. Yes, I think I think you are right, but I haven't considered uh, okay. <laughs> such a okay, let's, let's, you, you can, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, other question maybe? Uh. Any question from uh, Pak Sabto? Okay, uh, we have uh, other question from uh, Dr. David Marfaung. Yeah, he is uh, from Institute uh, Technology Sumatra. Yes. Dear Jia Jia, uh, I'm David. Uh, my question is, uh, could your technology quantify the nutritional and other chemical parameter of fish? Okay, that's the first question. Oh. Could your technology quantify the nutritional and other chemical parameter of fish using hyperspectral? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, hyperspectral you may technology is the same as uh, NIR spectral oh, okay. technology. Uh, the difference is the spectral image technology contains the spatial uh, information. Mm -hmm. So NIR, spectros NIR spectroscopy technology can quantify the nutrition and the other chemical okay. uh, parameters. So that's a hyperspectral image. It can, it can uh, monitor too. Mm, uh, I see. So uh, okay, that's uh, I think uh, yes, uh, uh, the NIR technology uh, is also well known, but hyperspectral technology is maybe a new one, so maybe uh, more powerful than uh, the conventional. And more, <laughs> and more, more dimension, a special uh, dimension. Uh. I see. Okay. So uh. the next question is uh, the second question is, is that applicable for various size of fish? So your system can be applied uh. to. Any fish with uh, maybe uh, long fish, uh, small fish, oh. big fish. <laughs> it, it, it is uh, applicable for various size of fish. Okay. Any fish you can measure, you can get the image. And you you, you, get, uh, you use Krucian, Krucian cup. What 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 what, what fish? <laughs> you you use uh, oh, a Chinese uh, maybe Chinese Chinese local local. Ah. Some, some local fish. Local this is a uh, pond fish, fish or uh, sea fish? Fresh water fish. Oh, fresh water fish. Fresh ah, fresh okay, water. okay. Yes. Uh. Uh, so maybe in our country, we have also many fresh water fish like uh, gurame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gurame, a little big one. So maybe uh, we have also uh, ikan mas. Uh, ikan mas is small one, <laughs> not so big. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, thank you. So we can apply your system, big one or small one. Okay. Mm. Oh, yes. 
Okay, uh, hopefully uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the question already. Uh, hmm. Maybe I have question. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, please, Yulia Sang. Uh, uh, okay. Yulia. Ask. Thank you, uh, San San, for your nice presentation today. I have a question for you uh, about the assessing price and frozen thought Russian carb quality by HSI technology that uh, from the table shows uh, the, uh, the sub spectral 10 from intake fish with scales and intake uh, scale fish with different pre-processing methods, PCS principal components. Uh, we can see that the R square evaluation uh, why the R uh, square evaluation lower compared than the others? Compare uh, for fresh fish, why R square evaluation for fresh fish lower than the frozen thought fish, fresh fish, and frozen thought fish? Uh, can you explain? Thank you. Uh. <laughs> Uh, that there is a lot of noise in 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 some kind. You help me to tran translate. Uh, maybe from uh, the in, uh, I, I forget the number of slides, but but just now uh, you show us the uh, table table the, oh, yes. the table about the storage time prediction models. For ah. fresh and frozen thought fish. Uh, the yeah. table for predicting the storage time. Of prediction models. Predict, prediction for models. fresh and frozen ah, fish. Maybe, maybe you, you did you remember the, the number of table or maybe the slide uh, number? The table. Okay. <laughs> what slide? <laughs> but uh, uh, to... the number is. Uh, red red number you give the colors with red uh, red color no, no i mean the the number of slide what what uh, slide now or maybe you can uh, share our your presentation sanjaya your uh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. maybe i can share the the print screen of the slides you show oh, okay 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 no no uh, sanjaya uh, san okay uh -huh. this one uh no no. Uh, before, before. The, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh, okay. Uh, this one. one. So she, one. she asked you about why the fresh fish, the R square is lower compared to the other. Yes, yes. The question is like this. Why the fresh fish? Yes, the, the yes. fresh fish, the R square in the cross validation is mm -hmm. lower compared to the other. So yes. what is the, the oh, problem? Yes. Oh. Understand what? Why is this is higher yeah. or not lower? Why? Yeah. <laughs> why is this higher than the than the mm. this one? Yes, the R square. The, the red one is zero point six one. Zero point yes. seven one is lower comparing to the other. For example, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is lower. So, mm. uh, fresh base with scales. I think in this case maybe the scales, the fish scales has a big effect. Um, on uh, our prediction model, uh, uh, system will remove the scale. But for uh, the frozen thorn fish, uh, is I think is it is because of scale skills. I see, I see. Mm. Uh, so the, the skills mean uh like some interference to the it, your uh image. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, that's uh, the answer, Julia San. So. The, the skills. <laughs> yeah, maybe the so that's why uh, reflect, the uh, intact skill is better than the intact fish. Yeah, intact, yes. intact fish. Mm. But okay. maybe in the application, you should uh, use intact fish, right? If, if yeah, you yeah. apply. Mm. So mm. We, we will try to improve the model. Yeah, I see. Because uh, in the appli application, we, we should use the uh, intact fish uh, sampling because yeah. if we remove the Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh. 
wide. Eight, eight. Um, I'm sorry for all participants and Miss Dr. JJ Sang. Um, there is there is some trouble with the uh, Mr. Reading connection, and Mr. Reading still try to join this this Zoom again. And please wait.
Um, okay, I, I see that there is a question in chat box from Dr. Warti. Okay, I can see I can see the question. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question. Can I have some reviews to stem shape and steady motor shape and state very important in shame fitting? Uh, thank you for your question. The um, I think hyperspectral image can be used to estimate the shrimp density in water, but uh, I think camera only camera is camera is enough for enough to estimate the shrimp density is enough. Uh, is camera uh, enough to estimate the shrimp density in water. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Hyperspectral image can be used to es estimate the shrimp density in water, um, but uh, as I mentioned before, um, hyperspectral image contain a lot of data. It will reduce the, uh, it will increase uh, increase the uh, data processing time. Uh, I think uh, for um, shrimp density uh, mounting camera maybe is enough. Uh, only the image information is enough.
information because in campus and all around there's some trouble with signal um lost crossing signal so Mr. Reading, um out from zoom and i ask again if any questions for our participants you can raise your hand or write your question in chat box Um, any questions? Um, I think there is a question again. Um, I'm so sorry for for some mistakes. Um, thank you, Miss Dr. J. J. Shah, for the insightful presentation. Um, the next is for the certificate and conversation. Maybe the comment can um, share, screen, share screen for the certificate. And for the all uh, participants, uh, you can open your camera, open your Uh, I think for the conversation is enough, and I'm so sorry for the um the trouble, and I think we we would end this international lectures. Uh, well, those are the agendas that have been implemented. Hopefully, it would be useful for us, and we will be officially end. Please not the third international lectures will be held on November 2021. And make sure to mark the date for the third practice. 
finally, representing all of the comments, I would like to say thank you for your participation. And in the end, I'm Barra Sofiana signing out. Thank you and see you. Thank you for your thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sanjia Jia. <laughs> nice to enjoy your lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Recording. Thank you, Ms. Chan Jia. Thank you. Hope we have another chance to communicate again. Okay. Uh, this is. Asato. Ya. <laughs> eh Pak Sandi, ya. saya pakai seragam jurusan ini. Oh iya bagus itu. <laughs> Mau beli baru lagi Pak. Buatun apa kabar buatun? Alhamdulillah Pak. <laughs> ya. Sehat ya. Aduh. Sehat. Iya <laughs> ini lama nggak ketemu. Iya ini. Kucing kemana ini? Pak Aman, terima kasih Pak Aman. Tunggu. Laras, terima kasih ya. Kamu di mana Rara sekarang? Lagi di rumah, Pak. Oh iya. Di mana maksudnya? Di mana? Di Kelombong Barat. Oh, itu perbatasan Cina itu ya. Kecamatannya apa itu, Rara? Kecamatannya? Penaragan? Iya, sekarang di, lagi di Penaragan, Pak. Oh, betul. Iya. Ya. <laughs> Dekat Tugu Jamur ya, eh Tugu Payung. Ya. Sabtu sering beli payung ke sana ya. Iya. <laughs> ini lagi ya Pak. Ini sudah bisa lagi ya Pak. Ini sudah selesai ya, kita ini ya. Oke oke. Enki Alexander, apa kabar, Renki? Pak Oktav, apa kabar, Pak Oktav? Hmm. Ini langen di Pak Diting ini. <laughs>